My name is Matthew Roberts. I had three major projects where we made little shapes in a AutoCAD program called OnShape. My second major project was a homemade speaker. And my last project is a chessboard. The chessboard itself is done, but I'm also making some pieces for it, which is where this little piece can't, comes from. Here we can see that is a spiral chess piece with a little ball at the top. And I've had to redo this one several times. What tools did you find most useful in your projects? The computer, the Onshape AutoCAD program, a 3D software called Blender. I'm Max Millar. Um, well, my biggest project this year was 3D printing an electric guitar. So what components did you have to print? Um, mainly just the body, but I also printed some other accessories to go along with it as well. Parts I salvaged from an older guitar that I had that I took apart to use as the base for this one. What made you decide to do this project? I, don't know, I just thought it'd be fun. I saw some videos on it and thought it would be cool to see if I could make one from like my own designs. What was the biggest challenge in making your guitar? Probably getting the wiring. And what tools did you find most useful? Definitely a sander. <laughs> what was the most gratifying about your project? Um, seeing it come together at the end, putting the 3D parts together for the first time and seeing that it looks like a guitar was pretty satisfying. Did you have to use creativity in your project? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> I mean, the whole thing is a creative process. You have to get creative, like the ways you're gonna do things because when it's 3D printed, it's a lot different than wood. So you have to kind of improvise, I guess, at times. Yeah, thank you. I'm Eliza Pachellas. And I'm Dixie Marie Banks, but you can call me Dixie. Well, we started off by brainstorming with a lot of ideas and we had thought about making um, some different types of signs. And then eventually we cut out these letters and we were going to have them go um, vertically. But then we decided that it would look cooler to do it this way and we just added the lights and everything kind of came together naturally with the help of our teachers. What was the biggest challenge? Trying to find the spacing for the letters. A lot and of this project was based on impulsive decisions. Yeah. What tools did you find most useful? I think the Glowforge helped us a lot with getting these smooth lines on the letters. What do you think was the most gratifying in this project? Um, gratifying actually getting the lights in and seeing the finish Product. Yeah, like, when the lights started running, yeah. like the patterns, I just yeah. remember being... What did you think was something that made you use your creativity? Coming up with different ideas and deciding on the style we wanted to go for. Just, I think, coming up and learning with the different um, coding that we could use to get all these different cool lights, and it was really fun. If you were going to do this project over again, would you actually pick this project? I actually think so, because it, yeah, it helped us exercise a lot of the different skills in Creativity Lab. We were able to use the power tools. You know, I was I had to use the table saw and I was terrified. And we got to learn how to use the Glowforge and Arduino and lots of different skills that I think we can apply to further projects we may do. And this one, if we did it again. And actually measure stuff out before we act on impulse. Yeah, pro tip to all the people joining this class next year, do take measurements instead of just impulsively setting go. Uh, I'm Gideon Vargas. I work with Gabe Cannon. Our project was a first person view drone right here. Um, so we designed the frame, we cut it out of wood. Then we also designed the camera holder. And then we bought all the other pieces and started them together. Uh, Mr. Burke brought in a special guest that talked to us about drones. What tools did you find most helpful in building your project? A soldering iron. What do you think was the biggest challenge in making your project? Getting the remote to connect with the receiver. We're still working on that a bit. Would you pick the same project to do? Maybe a little bit different. I'd maybe make the frame out of a different material instead of wood. What do you think was the most creative thing you had to do in building your drone? Uh, the frame. Uh, so we designed it in on shape, then we made a drawing of it, and then we cut it out with the glue forge. All right, thank you very much. My name is Annika Southern. 
I am a junior here at American Heritage, and for my Creativity Lab project, I made this halberd. Um, it is a one-to-one -one scale model of the Royal Guards halberd from Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I made this halberd because I saw it in-game when I was playing, and I was like, oh, I want to make that. <laughs> so I just thought it would be kind of cool. I found the patterns on, uh, I think it was called Thingiverse, and so then I 3D printed everything, and since then, I have been working on painting, as you can see. I've been trying to get some like Bondo in here to get the print lines up, which has been taking a lot of sanding and I still need to be working on that. I just need to finish painting and sanding. And then around this area right here, I'm going to get a maroon graduation cord, which is going to flow down and be sort of a rope effect. So what was your biggest challenge? This part right here, actually, it's a little bit hard to see, but there's a faint crack line here. This actually broke and fell off quite a few times because the lamination of the print layers here was so thin that it just kept falling off. Yeah. What tools did you find most useful? Um, 3D printers in the Creativity Lab have been very helpful. <laughs> and then also I have these detail sanders that are like these little like small thingies that you can just sand the tiny bits with and they're very helpful for getting in the nooks and crannies. What did you find most gratifying about doing this project? Seeing it kind of like come together. I mean like I started out with just these 3D files not, and so then just like printing them out and putting them all together to make something that's ultimately taller than I am <laughs> is kind of fun to do and actually just it has a good, actually has a pretty good weight to it, so it feels like it's a real sort of halberd almost, except for the fact that it's not made out of metal. But I think it's pretty cool to see it all come together. So. If you were going to do this project all over again, would you pick this same project? Mm -hmm. I would do something like this, at least, because there are some other files for some other different objects that I thought would be kind of cool. So I might do something similar to this, but um, <laughs> I probably would definitely have a lot more knowledge about it and know where to start first. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Of course. Uh, my name is Josiah Danes. What was your project? I decided to build myself a speaker. All of it was from scratch. We did have like the materials, uh, 3D printed uh -huh. the chassis, and then built the box in the creativity lab. So what made you decide to do this project? My friend Nathan was doing it and I was like, hey, why don't I just tag along and like make my own with him. What tools did you find most beneficial in in building your project? An Onshape. I used Onshape for both of the speaker chassis and then also for designing the box just so I could see that everything fit perfectly. What did you learn most from using Onshape? I was able to learn how to properly make uh, 3D objects a lot easier. What do you think was the most exciting thing about the project? Probably making the box just because you get to use like a lot of power tools. I got to use the nail gun and also just back here there's this like box, which I kind of messed up, but it was kind of cool to use like the saw to cut it out. That was fun, so. Does it work? Yes, it works. Yes. Yep. So if you were gonna do this project again, would you do this project or would you pick something else? I think I would do this again and try and like clean up some stuff. If I had more time, I'd probably like paint it and then make better chassis. Anything else you want to share about doing the project? I think it was cool because now I know how to make a speaker. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. I'm Isabel Fee. And I'm John Burr. And, and this is our project, a guitar. How did you decide to do that project? Um, well, both of us play guitar and we just thought why not do something, make something that we both enjoy playing? Yeah, woodworking has always kind of interested me, and I think, I don't know, it's just something that yeah. was really interesting to both of us, and then also it's something that we're going to love and use a lot, so. What did you find as the most valuable tool in creating this project? I would say glue, glue and sanding. Glue. <laughs> and a sanding. lot of this <laughs> is held together with glue. And we sure. use a lot of clamps. <laughs> what would you say was the biggest challenge? The oh, biggest challenge? Yeah, definitely it has to be precise. It has to be... You have to know what you're doing. You have to kind of study and make sure you have the right stuff to do. Because I had to... I, I like constantly watch videos of how to do stuff and like see what other... What different things people do. You know, just kind of... Figuring it out. I think the scariest thing might have been bending the sides. Oh yeah, definitely. Because if you mess up on bending the wood, that was a straight piece of wood that we done. had to completely reshape, and that was scary. Yeah. So show us the guitar and tell us a little bit more about the different pieces that go together. So we've got 
the face of the guitar, which is a black walnut. And then we've got the rosette, which we use the plunge router for. And that's made, this, it's a small, thin Indian rosewood. And then the sides and the back are also made out of Indian rosewood. So the, the three, four main pieces are the face, the back, and the two side pieces. And then of course the neck. neck. We're, We're still working right on the neck. <laughs> it's a uh, curly maple. It should look really good once it's done. Yep. Was it a challenge to get the ribs inside? Oh, the... Uh, we did it. Luckily, you're talking about the bracing? The bracing yeah. on the inside? We did it while the pieces were all separate. Yeah, so. so it was, so we did the back while it was separate. For the face, Mr. DeBerg wanted to do it a different way than I had planned on doing it. So we did it while the face was attached to the body, yeah. which was a little challenging trying to fit clamps in and maneuvering your way around. <laughs> we, we got creative. We got it done, <laughs> yeah. Like Trial. practices. Practice bending the wood with some of the extra scrap wood from the space simulator, some thin stuff. Yeah, I did it maybe eight times. Wow. So yeah, I did a lot. Some snapped, some were too short, but eventually we got it perfect. The scary thing is with the different types of wood, the the really cheap thin wood would bend easy sometimes. We weren't sure if this wood would bend easy. Yeah, so and it was a lot easier. less stressful because there was no pressure it was scrap wood. Yeah, but this is the, doing the real thing was scary. Yeah. And did you have to soak the wood so you could bend it? Yes. Soaked it. Soaked them for about an hour and then used a silicone heating blanket to Heat push it, it down. Heat it, steam it. Yep. Mm -hmm. So if you were going to start this project over again, would you do the same project? I think so. That or an electric guitar. Yeah. Because really electric a lot easier than acoustic. The acoustic nice thing is, is, is the nice work. thing is that um, at the beginning of the year we built all these jigs that helped us bend the wood and shape yeah. it and things. So if we did it, were to do it again, it'd be a lot simpler and we know how to do it. Yeah. But uh, it's definitely it's definitely a challenge. <laughs> For sure. For sure. So do you think you learn skills that you'll use later in life? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Like the first, I remember the first time I came in here, I did not know what any of this stuff was like or how to use it and like it was scary using some of the stuff at first but then after a while it's like oh yeah that's this this is that and i know how to use it confidently yeah, knows the stuff. so do you feel like you had to use your creativity to c complete the project oh of course yeah, sure. 100 percent. like with the jigs i had we had to figure out how to the first jig is how we bent the wood it's pretty much the side of a guitar that we would clamp it down to and heat it up. And that took a lot of like creativity because we had to come up with that and then- Experimenting with, experimenting. with different things, seeing what works, what doesn't. Yeah. It was definitely a learning process. A lot of process. trial and error. Yeah. <laughs> very cool. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank of you. Thank you. Uh, tell us your name. Adam Johnson. What is your project? Um, I'm making this, this desk right here. Um, I designed it and I built it all. And very cool. Um, what made you pick this as your project? I don't know. I just thought it sounded like a really interesting idea because um, Mr. Burke and a couple other people were making furniture things, and I just thought it'd be really cool to design and build my own desk, and so I decided to do that. What tools did you use to come up with the design? I used Onshape, the Onshape. online modeling program. Okay. And what did you find to be the most useful tools in creating the project? Table saw was useful, although that one is a little bit scary to use. <laughs> um, the sander is very nice. What did you find most satisfying about doing the project? Probably the staining. Because it just it adds to the whole thing and it makes it look really nice. And so it's just really exciting. If you were going to start over again, would you still pick this project? Yeah, I think so. And it's been really how did you have to use creativity in building your desk? There's eight legs. I don't know if you can see that. There, uh, there were originally ten legs. I was going to put one at each at this corner and then the same on the other side. Um, but I realized that when I modeled the desk, I made it too short, and so I had to improvise so that each leg would be longer. And so I just I took out those two legs so I had extra 
extra length and all the other ones. So that was that was one thing. Um, this this face right here was actually a suggestion by Mr. DeBerg. If uh, you were going to suggest a project for somebody else, would you suggest a project like this one? Uh, I would say yes, as long as you really care about it and you're willing to spend a lot of time on it. Uh, and what what will you use this for? I'm I'm probably just going to use this as a personal desk. It's going to be really cool. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm Isaac Reyes. What was your project? I'm trying to make a racing drone. A racing drone? Yes, correct. And what are you doing actually right now? So we're actually laser cutting the parts for it right now. So we designed it in odd shape yeah. and then created a drawing and now we're laser cutting it with the board. Very cool. Yeah. What inspired you to do this project? Kind of something that popped up. Mr. DeBerg said he had a friend that was into racing drones and that's something I've always been interested in, drones. I have cool. a couple at home, but they're more cinematic, nice, smooth shots. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily racing, but this will be a nice addition to that. What did you find that was the most valuable tools in doing this project? Quad shape and 3D design. Mm. Because having that, knowing what it would look like before you actually created it was super helpful. What's the biggest challenge? Challenge was also on shape. It's difficult to get everything, making sure it would fit together and all the dimensions were good. What do you think is the most rewarding about the project? Most rewarding? If it turns out right, that'd be the most rewarding for sure. Be able to fly something that I created all by myself. So do you think creativity was necessary for this project? Oh yeah, for sure. I'd uh, use my creativity to help solve that problem. So if you had started the semester over again and you were going to do a project, would you still pick this one? Oh yeah, for sure. All right, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Okay, my name is Ollie Buer and we're missing one of our other um, people in this class that helped with this project, Ava Smith and... I'm Jace Pulley. So this is our shopping cart, go-kart cart, so... Very cool. Yeah. So uh, what gave you the idea for this project? Um, well, we wanted to do something that um, nobody else was doing um, and we wanted to have some sort of like vehicle. So we were just looking at um, kind of this fun like car ideas and we kind of think we just ran across this. So, yeah. Where did you get the uh, components, all the different pieces? Um, primarily from Metal Mart. The shopping carts are from various places. Um, found them on the side of the road and stuff but um yeah um pretty much we made everything from scratch we went to metal mart got a bunch of uh just metal and started fabricating everything so what was the biggest challenge with making the cart um we had to learn how to weld for sure um and just learn a new skill as far as welding goes um getting everything to work properly i guess too just a lot of that we ran into some troubles with the, the tires we had to figure out that and um, re replace those a few times and yeah so so would you s say that the welding tools were the most valuable yeah the yeah. like the angle grinder and the so we could obviously like cut the metal and then the welder welding okay um what do you think was the most gratifying about the card itself uh, when, yeah, I think when we first got it to drive, <laughs> yeah. the, the first time it drove, that was that was that was pretty cool. I mean, um, for me, it was like yesterday when we had everyone um, just try it out and driving it. It wasn't falling apart, but like we got like probably like fifteen people to try it out, and just yeah, that was that was really cool to see. Yeah, just seeing it all come together, I guess. What kind of a challenge was it to uh, get the drive working and the steering working? Yeah, the steering mechanism took took a, took a lot of research, I guess, but we figured it out. It it works, obviously. It's like when one pushes one, the other one pulls. So yeah, it's simple, but also complicated at the same time. So. And how about the uh, drivetrain? Yeah, so we've we've uh, attached a pedal and a this is the this is the gas over here that um, pulls a wire attached, and then we pull the throttle on the back here, and then that. Uh, that gets it yeah, to, so when yeah. you push the, it pulls the pedal right here when you push the pedal, so. Yeah. And the braking mechanism? Uh, the brake as well, there's a wire attached to it, and it'll uh, 
thing that pinches a hub right there. And that horseshoe. Pulls. The horseshoe right there. Yeah. So and that pulls on a attaches a metal disc to another and it creates friction which causes the wheel to stop spinning. Very cool. Yeah. Yay. Yay. I'm Kelly, I just supervised this project. Uh, of yeah. course we have our Jesus Hawaii license plate for the final touch. <laughs> yes, uh, provided by Ava Smith. Provided by Ava Smith, yes. Thank you, Ava. Yes. Thank you, Ava. And thank you guys for doing such a cool project. Yeah, it was a lot of, of fun. Yeah. It was really cool. Thank you, Creativity Lab, for yeah, all the support, no. the teachers. Shout out to Sarge. Yeah, yeah. Especially Sarge, yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, so much work. A lot, yeah, every day for the last year. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's been awesome though. Very cool, thanks guys. Yeah, of course. My name is Ariana Bell. What gave you the idea for this project? So, in my class of written portfolio, we were assigned to do a project on writing a story with dialogue. And I was like, okay, I can do that. That seems fun. And it was fun. So I wrote a story and then I ended up liking it enough to the point where I actually wanted to try animating it because I thought it would be fun to bring my characters and my story to life. It's a bit harder than I expected, but I'm doing my best to make it work. Here's... What, what did you find most difficult? So far, what I'm finding most difficult is probably figuring out what I want with like the movements of the characters and placements and perspective in the scene. That's pretty much everything, but I'm working through it and hopefully one day it'll be done if I decide to continue it. <laughs> Can you show us the other scene you've worked on? Sure. Um, uh, I have a tapping hand. This is when she's working on her homework and isn't quite sure what she's doing, so she's thinking. Um, and the other scene I have that has not been colored or lined yet is the opening a door. And Very cool. That's pretty much what I have so far, other than character designs and some classroom sketches. You want to show us any of those? Um, I don't know. Sure. Nice. Character design of the guy and the character design of the girl. Super. It's fun. And classroom scene. I'm not entirely sure what I'm doing there. Another classroom scene with the interactions. <laughs> so a little bit of planning out beforehand, but I'm mostly improvising. So what did what tools did you find most helpful in, in doing this project? <laughs> there you go. If I didn't have this, I don't know what I would be doing. Uh -huh. I couldn't do it with my finger. <laughs> um, what did you find was the biggest challenge? Well, figuring out what I wanted, what kind of scenes I wanted to have. Like, I have to take out a few of the parts in my story to make it manageable to my iPad because it can only handle so much. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe that. <laughs> what would you say was the most gratifying? Finishing it, doing an overlay layer on an animation. That's pretty cool. Very good. If you were going to start all over again, would you do the same project? I think I would. If I had the chance to start it earlier, I would. Uh -huh. Do you think you got to use your creativity in this project? Absolutely. I love drawing. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. No problem. My name is Caden Dawson. What gave you the idea to do this project? Well, I watched Iron Man 1 and I was just like, oh, I like that. And there was another kid who's making an Iron Man helmet, so I wanted to make one as well. What was the biggest challenge with this project? Definitely the hinge um, part for the lifting mechanism. 
I still haven't been able to fix, um, figure it out, but it's getting there. It kind of jams right there, but it's, it's, it's supposed to lift up as the surface activates. And what tools did you find most useful? The 3D printer, definitely, because <laughs> everything on here is 3D printed except for the pad. What was the most gratifying about this project? Well, I'm glad that the helmet fits my head. I also am pleased that the lights work well. Oh, it turns nice. on the lights. You can see through them, which is, it, it has a really nice finish on the red. So I'm happy that how it turned out. So what did you feel was the most creative thing you had to do with this project? I had to come up with the hinge mechanism all on my own. On, on it, I had to completely come up with the, with the hinge mechanism. And it took a little bit, a couple tries, and I found something that may work if I um, fix it up. If you had to start all over again, would you try to do this same project? Yes, and I'll make it smaller. <laughs> all right, thank you very much. Yeah. Ryan Mitchell. What gave you the idea to do this project? No, that's true. Well, I know I've just been like pretty interested in the Titanic just throughout my childhood and I thought it'd be kind of cool to build one. Like, what was the biggest challenge? Um, probably a challenge I'm still working on is trying to fill these holes in the front and the back. That's probably been the biggest challenge. <laughs> so the biggest challenge I've probably faced with this boat is one that I'm figuring out right now is just filling the holes in the front and back of it. I think I figured it out. I'm just going to put a couple pieces of foam back there and it should be good. What tools did you find most useful? 3D printer. Most of the stuff is 3D printed on here. And then I used the glow for all the wooden pieces. What was the most gratifying about your project? Probably just seeing it all come together. Because like in the on-shape modeling thing, you can kind of see it all laid out after you built it. But then like putting it together has been really cool to see it all come together. Do you think you got to use your own creativity in doing this project? I do, yes. Um, it was pretty much all on my own. I got to design the whole thing by myself and then build the whole thing by myself, paint it and everything. So I think it's very, very creative. Very good. Thank you so much.